This one is so easy that I am pretty sure even your toddler can do it. All right, who's ready for another maintenance episode? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. This is the Vikings Garage. And yes, this will be the very first episode that we're going to do it in the garage here. There's a lot of cleaning to be done, but we will get through it eventually. Maintenance series, guys. Episode number five. This one is so easy that I'm pretty sure even your toddler can do it. Actually, that's a pretty bad example because coolant does have a substance that it's highly toxic. So please do keep this away from kids and your pets because the consequences will not be pleasant. Do wash your hands after dealing with coolant. In all seriousness, it is very toxic, guys, and do not play around with that stuff. As you can see, I'm going to wear some gloves. But speaking of which, let me show you guys the only tools you're going to need for this job. It is that simple and easy. All right, let's get right to it. These are the tools that you're going to need, or I should say items. You need a gallon of coolant. This is the only coolant you're going to need. I don't care what coolant you get as long as it's this one. There's no measuring needed. There's no mixing needed. This is the fluid that you need, and the only quantity you need is one gallon. Please do use gloves because this stuff is toxic. You do not want this in your mouth. And regardless of gloves or not, make sure you wash your hands after you're done. You're going to need this hose. You will see in a second why. And this is the funnel you're going to need. That's the part number for the Mako Tools one. There's different variations, different brands. As long as you get one that works with Toyotas, you're good to go. And last but not least, I almost forgot, you are going to need a tray. The area we are working with right now is front passenger. So let's get right to it. First things first, you gotta take this beauty cover out. Why? Because your radiator cap sits right there and we gotta open it. So check this out. This is how you take out these clips without breaking them. Very simple. Press down, same screwdriver, pop it up. Get yourself a coffee can and drop it in so you don't lose it. Now let's get them all out. All right, so we took out all the clips. Now we remove this cover, nothing to it. Pop it up, set it aside. And now here comes the tricky part, not tricky. Do this when your car is cold because if you do it when it's hot, there's going to be a little bit of an explosion, not an explosion, but the hot cooling is gonna splash. You don't want hot coal in your skin, you could get burned. So your best bet is do it when the car is cold. But if you're not sure if the car is cold, I'm gonna show you what you can do just to prevent any unwanted burns. All right, here we go. So grab yourself a rag. And what you do is you wanna cover the area, okay? And then you can now loosen it up because if there is any excess that's going to splash out, it will splash onto the rag and not onto your skin. Yes, you're probably wondering, wow, you got a TRD cap? Stay tuned till the end of the episode and we'll go over this. If you see here, this is your passenger side of the car. And in the lower portion of your radiator, you're going to have this little plug. Now, this guy is the one that you have to loosen up in order to drain your coolant. And why? Did I tell you to get that hose? Very simple, guys, because you can totally do this job without removing your skid plate. So clearly most of you are probably gonna have this cover on your car. Obviously, you go to this side. It's supposed to have a trim piece here, but mine is going to pop it from the inside out, pops right out. And I can assure you, with your piece of hose, it's gonna go somewhat on an angle but you totally do not have to take the shield off. You can reach it with your hose. Let me show you what I'm working with here. You should not run into this problem. <laughs> the reason is I obviously grabbed the wrong hose. So that's why I want to clarify this for you guys. What I meant when I said, when you go to get the hose, so you, re you see a regular pin, 
should fit like so. This is the right size hose that you're gonna need. It roughly fits a quarter inch drill bit, roughly. So anyways, let me get my MacGyver skills here, see if uh, they work. Now, once you got your hose connected, all you gotta do is open it up. That is it, man. You open her up about halfway and leave it and that's it make sure you got the tray underneath and uh gravity will take care of the rest and then guys it's just a waiting game you gotta wait until it finishes dripping over there and you know what to do pull the hose and close the valve again i'll show you what i'm talking about as you can see not even 20 minutes later it's just about done so what I'm going to do now, take this hose out and close our valve so that we can then pour some cooling in. Here we go. Let's see how glamorous I can make this shot look. Close this off. And then, of course, super important, make sure this valve is closed all the way. You don't need to yank at it like if your life depended on it. Just close. That's all you got to do. Just close her up and you're good to go okay and to fill it up is very simple as you can see here by comparison this bracket mimics what a radiator cap would look like so all you got to do is drop it in line the marks up and rotate until it locks confirm that it's in place and you're good to go now with your valve down below closed and your funnel properly installed, you grab your coolant, you're gonna break the seal. Let me get a knife. Once you do break the seal, as promised before, one gallon is all that you're gonna need. I promise. And there's really nothing else to it uh, from this point on. Once uh, the bubble stopped here and you finally have a steady level what you're gonna do is go inside and turn on your car and let it run for 15 20 minutes if you want to play it safe and that should be it there's just a small little trick in between there but i will show you that in a second so now that she's been running for roughly uh, 20 minutes first step you want to do confirm that you have absolutely no bubbles coming out which you will not then in my case i gotta make it through here and inside the car so i'll meet you guys inside the car why inside the car you must be asking very simple you want to make sure that you my friend got heat so let's confirm that yes sir you have heat which means your system is bled now let's go back outside the car Here's how you do this. You got yourself the coolant, car is still running. What do we do? And very simple. You see this guy? Place it in there, remove it as if you were removing a cap, and install your cap. Very simple. Make sure it's tight and you're ready to go. Now you're saying to yourself, what am I supposed to do with this? Remember I told you you're gonna need a little coolant, a gallon? Put it in the reservoir. Check it out. Now, you're probably gonna notice that your reservoir, I'll show you guys an angle in a second, is gonna be overfilled. Well, not to worry, my friend, because over time, believe it or not, the system is gonna work some more of this fluid back in, and that level is going to correct itself. Now that you have placed your cap back on, fluid back on, make sure this cap is seated all the way. You can then reinstall your beauty cover here. Make sure it clears the hood stops and you're ready to go. You grab your coffee mug and you're gonna go ahead and just reinstall your clips. There's really nothing to it. 
I have 100% confidence that every single one of you out there can do this job yourselves at home. So what did you guys think? I mean, this is pretty simple stuff. A uh, couple of steps and you're done. Take your time. Don't rush it. And if you do have any questions, you can always reach me in the comments down below. But in the meantime, don't forget to smash that like button. And if you haven't done so, what are you waiting for, man? You better subscribe. And I will catch you guys on the next one. All right, let's see how many radiator caps I can get in a clip without confusing anybody. So, guys, yes, I ended up getting a TRD radiator cap. And as you guys can see there, 1.3, so that's 1.3 bar. This is the pressure of the system. Now, I don't want to get too technical here because honestly, there's much better videos out there than what I could potentially explain to you guys. But this is the cap that came out of my car. But as you can see, there's one D, another D. So this is a horrible example. Usually you see caps that have 1.1. So my car was 1.1 and we went to 1.3. See, that's a Honda cap. But there are some that it's even lower. So, yes, what does this all mean? Different pressure. Supposedly, with this one, you'll be able to cool the system a lot faster. It is, I believe, used mostly for track purposes, especially for people that are using water. And when I say water, I say distilled water. Let's not get confused. Because some tracks don't allow you to use coolant. I know. I said I wasn't going to explain, but here I am explaining. But as you can see here, uh, Honda S2000 is actually 1.1. But sure enough, same company. You guys see the same kind of stamp there. But my main concern and goal with this clip was actually lays all right here. So this is the actual uh, part of the package in which my, you see the part number there, in which my radiator cap came in. Now, guys, for what I understand, if I find an actual fake one, I'm gonna put it in the corner of the screen there. Don't be fooled and uh, get a fake one. Uh, one of the telltale signs is on this package. You see how nice and neat this uh, symbol is here for the TRD and lined up with the racing development. The fakes are gonna look all out of whack with that box. And not to mention that the actual back of the package is going to look honestly like a copy of what you see here minus the sticker so i'm all about doing upgrades but don't be supporting bootleggers and people that just don't put quality into their products you want something like this don't settle for the fake one i wouldn't want you guys getting the fake one not to mention if you look on the edge there this one actually even has a code imprinted there very cool I've only noticed it now, but yeah, there's a whole lot of different caps. Is it really necessary with my truck? Most definitely not. I know this, and I'm sure somebody in the comment section is going to tell me the exact same thing. And yes, I know, this looks terrible, but guess what? The cover goes over it, nobody ever sees it. I know this video has been going on for way too long, but how could I not include this gym? Woo! Sexy.